This video will contain spoilers up to chapter 25EX, as well as a post Honkai Odyssey and manga such as Alien Space, Second Eruption and Second Key. If you're not up to date and you don't want to be spoiled, please come back after you are caught up. I wish to begin by explaining what this trailer is, because I saw many people confused that thought that this trailer is an upcoming animation. No, this is a trailer for the next story arc that will start in chapter 26. Think of it more like the reawakening trailer for Dark Fuhua that was released last year. The animation is called Pre-Revelation. This is a reference to the Book of Revelation from the Bible, which basically talks about the apocalypse. So yeah, the title is literally Pre-Apocalypse. You're very funny, Mihoyo. Now, this can be just a reference to Ado's name or hint at something more, a big event that is about to change everything. In the thumbnail, we can see a child Ado touching a strange box. This is a reference to Elan Palatinus manga when Ado first came into contact with the Void Archive. This is very important, but we'll talk about it in more detail later. The trailer starts with the point of view of Ado. He's in the middle of a field, surrounded by what are most likely souls. We see him trying to reach something or someone. More on this scene at the end. We are back at the Shixel HQ and we hear Ado resigning from his position as overseer. This is all happening most likely as a consequence of Durandal's journey in Chapter 25 EX. Ado sends Durandal into the imaginary space to link the bubble universe inside her to the imaginary tree to save it from the gradual degradation caused by the Sea of Quanta and to collect data on the process. He's probably resigning because he doesn't need Shixel anymore. Oh, and remember that before falling into the Sea of Quanta, Sue gave all the data he managed to collect while enacting Project Valuka to Durandal, which in turn gave it all to Ado. Otto sitting on some kind of throne with the Shixel symbol on it and sipping some fine wine. At this point I believe that Otto's solium bodies function on wine by the amount he is always seen drinking. On his right we see Durandal wearing the bright knight Excelsis battle suit. And oh boy, this is a moment that made a lot of people angry. Every Dudu hater had his pitchfork ready when they saw her siding with Otto, even after he left Shiksal. Now, we don't know for sure that this is after or before, but it's pretty much implied that this is after he left. Throughout chapter 25 EX, we can see that Durandal goes through some sort of identity crisis. She constantly doubts that she is worthy of the Abyss Flower and she feels like she is living in Cecilia's shadow. So in this moment of confusion, I wouldn't put it past her to follow Otto, either to try to stop him at some point or she will just listen blindly to him. We don't know exactly what path she will choose. I just hope that the goose will get her character development and grow out of Otto's greasy claws. A lot of people also noted that Rita is missing from the trailer. My best guess is that she chose not to follow Simsama and remain at Shiksal. Unlike Dudu, Rita has always shown that she has a mind of her own, so I doubt that she would care for someone like Ado now that he is no longer the overseer. She even lied to him in chapter 9EX. <laughs> Ado raises a glass of wine as he looks outside. In the distance, we see the Hyperion approaching and the girls getting ready for battle. This means that for some reason, Ado wants to do something that doesn't really sit well with anti-entropy. He either wants to take something from them, maybe it's related to Sele and the Hersher of Death, but I doubt that, or maybe he wants to do something that is so destructive and dangerous that he needs to be stopped. This scene is very reminiscent of the Incarnation music trailer from GGZ. In fact, this whole trailer feels like a big callback to GGZ. Also, Terry Terry finally gets animated! Terry Terry! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> 
Next, we have Sele and Bronya fighting an army of masked Ados. He has multiple clones made of solium in which he transfers his consciousness, so seeing multiple Ados it's not something new. What's new is the fact that they all seem to act autonomously at the same time. I believe that this is something Ado could pull off because he took the core of domination after Kiana defeated the Ten Hersher and this lets him manipulate all his bodies like puppets. The masks and the suits that all these Ados are wearing are very similar to the mask and what he wore during the second eruption when he saved Sirin after she lost to Welt. A fine detail that the people have observed is the fact that Sele is using the Sanguine Gaze, which is the in-game weapon for Starcasm Nyx. Well, too bad that's false. The sight that Sele is using looks very similar to the weapon that Veliona is using, but it's not the Sanguine Gaze. If you look closely, this sight resembles more the weapon that Veliona transforms into during the Sele animation back in Chapter 12. The site has this strange curvature near the top and chains attached to it. If you look at the in-game weapon, it does not have all these things. Because of this, many people thought that maybe something bad has happened to Veliona and that she somehow got separated from Sele. I don't think so. That site is Veliona's power manifested in the same way as it was in the Sele animation. But what's truly interesting is that neither Bronya nor Sele fight at full power. We see Kiana in her Hersher of Flame Scion battlesuit later on, so maybe the power of the Core of Reason is with her. This explains why Bronya seems to struggle to maintain Project Bunny. We don't know yet how the Hersher of Flame Scion battlesuit operates. Or maybe another reason for them struggling is that big giant red moon in the background. It looks like they are fighting in the real world, but maybe not, since none of the fights that we see later do so. Maybe they are in some sort of illusion, or maybe whatever Ado is doing turned the moon red. We know that the moon is very important in Mihoyo games. The same red moon can be seen a lot in Genshin Impact. So yeah, whatever happens with the moon, it seems really important. The next scene is maybe the most talked about because of the appearance of a mysterious character. I will explain who she is, but first I want to talk about the location. This seems to be the mind space created by the Hersher of Sentience when she fought Kiana back in chapter 22. For this to exist, Fuhua must be working together with HOS or she snatch her powers again to be able to manifest the mind space. We can also see Fuhua using the spear that HOS usually uses, but with a blue color palette that symbolizes herself. Now, about the new mysterious character. She is Li Su Sang, the daughter of one of the disciples that betrayed Fu Hua 500 years ago, Qin Sui. Li Su Sang is an extremely talented martial artist that mastered the Tai Shan Sword of Eminence. She meets Ado when he comes to Tai Shuan to find Phoenix and they travel together for a while. It is not known how she is still alive or how she ended up on Ado's side, but it's not unexpected given their previous relationship in the visual novel. She is, most likely, the secret 3rd S-rank Valkyrie. Ado mentions the 3rd S-rank in the second part of chapter 25EX and after that she suddenly appears in the trailer. Coincidence? I doubt it. Oh, and she is also in the possession of one of the Key of Domination. That's why when Fuha broke that giant sword thrown at her, it broke in multiple water's edge. Moving on, we see Mei walking on the same platform that Bronya and Sele were running when trying to escape from the Sea of Quanta. We also see multiple quantum shadows forming around her, reinforcing that Mei is about to fight Durandal in the Sea of Quanta. Obvious Demon Slayer reference. The fight between the two is very symbolic in many ways. 
when they fought back in chapter 15 and Mei lost, Durandal's words cut very deep into Mei's mind. Mei's struggle before she became the Hersher of Thunder was the fact that she was too weak to protect the people she cared about, and Durandal played an extremely big role in affirming that fact. She was a pillar that she could never defeat, and because of that, she lost Kiana at that time. This played a very important role in her development later on. This scene is also a throwback at chapter 15 CG, when Durandal sparred with Kevin. If you notice, Durandal uses the same attack she used on Kevin from above, while Mei is directly under her, in the same way Kevin was at that time. What? What the f This again ties Mei back to Kevin and the Flame Chasers, and her being the representative of the Ward Serpent is even more impactful. Mei's victory over Dudu would solidify and demonstrate her growth and the fact that she's no longer a weak girl that can protect the people she cares about. The camera pans forward in a space that we can assume is the imaginary tree. The image is the same as the one from chapter 25 EX when Durandal reached the imaginary tree. Next, we have a shot of Otto in front of some sort of tree trunk with a symbol above it. This means that Otto has managed to reach the imaginary tree, something that was his goal for quite some time now. All these tree branches and the altar-like tree trunk reaffirm again that this is indeed the imaginary tree. Based on the information we know from the game, the imaginary tree is crucial in Otto's plan to revive Kallen. What I am most curious about is how exactly did he manage to get here, since he explicitly says back in chapter 25 EX that he can't travel through imaginary space since that is only possible for beings that fused with an extra dimension. Many people interpreted the symbol on the top of the trunk as the symbol of the Hersher of the End that we see in GGZ. And yeah, I, I can see the similarities, but it's not really the same. I, I spent quite a few hours looking for the symbol somewhere, but I couldn't find any identical patterns. For now, we can assume that this is just a new symbol that has a connection with the imaginary tree, and since the Honkai turned from it, it's probably connected to it as well. It's interesting to note that the color pattern of the symbol is the same as the lines on Otto's right arm. Kiana in her Hersher of Flame Scion form is reaching the same space as Otto and she prepares to confront him. This foreshadows an upcoming battle between the two. And honestly, it makes so much sense. Otto is the one that created Kiana and was the sole reason for her struggles and suffering. Her being the one to confront him is very appropriate. This scene also worries me a little. Please keep in mind that what I'm about to say is pure speculation. But Otto always had an interest in Kiana and wanted her to fully control her Hersher powers. All this time we thought that this was because he wanted her to use her void powers to create a path to the imaginary tree. But what if Otto had another plan for her that we never knew? And what if Kiana falls right into his trap? Remember, this is pure speculation, but I hope Kiana will be alright. We see Otto with that unknown symbol in his back, after which we transition to a space-like background with Otto absorbing what seems to be images of his memories. Otto also mentions an old friend. He could refer to many people here. He addresses Fuhua as old friend numerous times in the story, but I highly doubt it's her. It could be the will of the Honkai, but they are not really old friends. His first interaction with the will of the Honkai was 17 years ago during the second eruption, and for someone that has lived over 500 years, that's not that much time. Also, Aro mentions a deal, so the most likely candidate is the Void Archive. The same Void Archive that he uses to mimic the abilities of other divine keys. The Void Archive is a special case. As we learn in the Elan Palatinus manga and the post-Honkai Odyssey, 
The divine key that was made from the previous era, Herscher of Reason's core, is self-conscious. You can perceive it as an AI. We know that after Otto dies, the Void Archive takes control of one of his Solium clones and tries to help the Sky People, an alien civilization that colonizes other planets and harvests the Honkai energy from them, to come to Earth. Otto struck a deal with the Void Archive 500 years ago. The Divine Key will help Otto reach his goal in exchange for Otto's body. The deal Otto talks about in the trailer is most likely the one he has with the Void Archive. From what we know from a post Honkai Odyssey, Otto's body will be taken over by the Void Archive at some point anyway. This gives birth to a new theory. Look at Otto's face in this shot. Does this look to you like a face Otto would make? I mean, yeah, he's a crazy maniac, but Otto was never truly evil in the traditional sense of the word. This grimace is extremely distorted and malevolent, which is very out of character for Otto. I believe that at this point, this is not really Otto anymore, but the Void Archive possessing his body. This also would explain why it's absorbing Otto's memories. This place seems to be some sort of gate to the afterlife, or some place where souls gather in the imaginary space after they die. Throughout their games, Mihoyo always represented human souls in these wisp-like forms. We can see this in GGZ when Kiana is about to end the world, and in Genshin with the Silies. I wonder from where do all these souls come from? Are they from our reality? Does this mean that Aro's plan will result in some sort of genocide? I really hope not. Judging by the wounds Otto has, this is most likely happening after his battle with Kiana. There is a high possibility that Otto dies. or somehow gets access to a form of afterlife where the souls of the people who died reside. The reason why I believe this is true is the fact that Otto has always obsessed with bringing Kallen's soul back. His issue was never the fact that he wasn't able to make another Kallen, but the fact that he couldn't bring back the same Kallen that he grew up with 500 years ago. He literally wants the soul of Kallen, and that is why he was so obsessed with the Hersher of Death for such a long time and searched for an answer in the imaginary tree. Remember Teresa's Chronicles? When Otto kept telling himself that Teresa inherited Kallen's soul? After all, back in the second eruption, when Otto asked the will of the Honkai how to revive Kallen, the will of the Honkai stabbed itself. At that time, people interpreted that as the will of the Honkai mocking Otto. Fuck you! Or saying something that's beyond the understanding of a human brain. But what if the will of the Honkai literally told Otto that the only way to reunite with Kallen is to die? And this could also tie in with the theory that the Void Archive took over his body. Back in Alan Palatinus, when Otto struck a deal with the Void Archive to bring back Kallen's dead father, the Void Archive demanded his life to do so. Maybe the only way to be reunited with Kallen is for Otto to truly die. And the person Kiana is facing is the Void Archive using his body after his death. The scene ends with Otto walking towards a cross-shaped formation that is a callback to Evangelion and often used by Mihoyo in their games. No matter what happens, I'm very excited for this new arc and I can't wait to see how everything will tie in. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. If I missed something or I got something wrong, please let me know and I will put the additional information in a pinned comment. Please leave a like and subscribe if you want more Honkai content. Thank you for watching and remember not to be a simp like Arrow.